We've got, um, we have a few, uh, few minutes now for Q&As. Um, Shaquette's going to be, someone's going to have the, the mics. You got the mic? Sorry, okay, the mic person, wave. Okay, so and what, another mic on the other side. So are there any questions or short comments that people might have? Down on the left or the right? Down. Um, it was really good to hear what uh, you said, Gary, Pino and Helen. Uh, how do we actually grow the locally based ethnic media? How do we actually make it happen, grow, uh, beyond the aspiration of it? Um, I'll, I'll start just with a quick answer. It has to be government policy based. There's no other way of doing it, otherwise you're just going to open yourself up to the free market. In those communities which can sustain the media, they will always do so. At the moment, the federal government has undertaken a thing called an access and equity review, and one of the really strong recommendations is a far greater involvement in the government setting quotas. I know that you're not allowed to use that word, but it's really mm -hmm. important is in this context, and sets policies which actually dictate that you have to do it. Unless we force people to do it, they won't. And I think, you know, we see some of the problems in the mainstream press, and a lot of people are saying, well, this is where we need philanthropists to come in and to set up the Global Mail or the Guardian local edition, which is happening. Um, maybe in terms of the ethnic press, to counter that sort of Trojan horse that comes from overseas, we need the government to think seriously about um, helping some of these communities. Uh, you know, the ones that actually are growing perhaps don't need help, but the ones that are slowly dying perhaps do. This question in the middle there, in the fourth row back. Andrew, oh, over the, oh, sorry, before you, yeah, over the left. Hi. Uh, my name is Beatrice. Uh, look, I, um, thanks for all the things that you've said. I think that I agree with all of them. Two things. Um, one is the message that we give new arrived Australians or new arrived migrants to Australia. Um, English, um, qualifications, ability to adapt and um, uh, please ad ad um, adopt Australian values. Thank you very much. And so that's the first message. The mes and so the message is, if that's the case and we need to adapt, then we need to do like everybody else does, mainstream. The second thing is that for a long, long time, and, and thanks for bringing up the stuff about you know, what's happening in the 70s and the 60s and Pina, what you said, and what you said, Gary, as well. Young people and, and people who are out here doing stuff at the moment um, have come maybe through the Howard years where it was about go back to the mainstreaming, there's no there's kind of no um, assistance to understand the lobbying, the advocacy and the representation, the kind of stuff that we need to do. I think that, sure, it's about getting information out to people to know how to do that. And I don't think that we've got a, a, a generation that knows how to do that well. And so I wanted to ask you guys, any, any of you, what can we do to get that going again, if we can? Thank you. I think, I think it's been said enough that we'd actually need to advocate. We, we've been in a situation where we've given up, if you like, our rights. We, we've been sucked into this notion that we all have to speak English. And, and I think the reality is, and, th and those of you who work in your own ethnic communities will know that a lot of people will never learn English. And the more longer they've been here, the more they won't. And even if they've been here longer, they'll lose the English that they had. So the issue is one of legitimacy. We need to actually craft a, a narrative which actually says it's legitimate to deal with people's language and at the same time want to ensure that people pick up the language of English so that they can uh, function as well as possible. They are not mutually exclusive. Um, and uh, your point earlier about how you know, we encourage to assimilate when we migrate to Australia. It's really interesting. I, mean, I think it's in the government's interest to also mandate in terms of you know, uh, look at policies to put this into motion in media and in other sources where people are represented in such a way. So if you're asking newly arrived migrants to assimilate, why can't you show that assimilation on screen, you know, in storytelling? Because if you don't see a role model or any sort of reference to who you're supposed to be, then who are you, how are you even meant to imagine, you know what I mean, your identity as an Australian from a diverse background? Yes, the, Over here in the, the, the lady in the, yes, that's you. Yep, have you got the, the mic? It's gone, oh, it went there. Okay. You'll get the mic, yeah. okay. Sorry, well, up here okay. and down. Okay. Sorry, my name's Rajesh. Uh, my question to Helen and Gary as well, because Helen's worked in ABC and SBS and academic as well. In terms of teaching new graduates who are willing to work in the mainstream media as well as who 
you've got interest in multicultural media as well. What sort of educational policies do you think should be put in place so that you know the coverage of the ethnic <coughs> you know communities are done properly in mainstream media? Are there any policies, sort of initiative that the university is taking, or do you suggest anything that could be done? Or and also to Gary and the rest of the panel as well, the word ethnic media is that just putting the minorities into the in a box rather than getting them you know, to come out and better reflect their cultural ideas, policies. I'll, I'll talk a bit about yeah. the uh, education of, of young journalists. Um, we, we have journalists, young students coming in from all sorts of backgrounds. And when they come from that sort of background, they have a very cosmopolitan view of the world. And the sort of stories that my students are doing are actually sometimes I think more enlightening than what I see on on uh, some of the, certainly the commercial stations um, and and even the ABC. Uh, but it's it's not just about you know we say that yes we've turned on to News Twenty Four and my goodness we say we see all these presenters with different hues and colours, but who makes the decisions? It's it's the middle management people and it's the the head of the programs. And one thing that I have always been worried about is, especially when an Australian journalist goes overseas to cover a story, we've got to find the Australian angle, you know? Was there an Australian person in, in, in the body count, you know? Is there an Australian person in that scheme? You know, why can't we just do it about people? About, does it have to be a, an especially white Australian person in the story? Um, so, but we're trying, we're trying to bring out graduates who have all those attributes. Yeah, I mean, I think it's hugely problematic, this, whole, this insular view or this idea that everything has to be about Australian for it to be relevant and everything has to be about white Australian, you know what I mean? It could be uh, an Indigenous Australian or an uh, Australian from a culturally diverse background. Um, and Helen, what I was referring to is I wasn't talking about journalists when I was talking about internships. I was talking about, because I come from an arts background and a journalism background, in terms of the creatives and, and I guess the decision makers and in terms of programming and in terms of, you know, writing for shows and all that kind of stuff. Um, as far as I'm aware, I haven't worked for either organisation, nor do I, I'm well connected to people, I know some people, but from what I, from my knowledge, there is no um, pathway for creative people of culturally diverse background to enter the organisation in a structured way. Of course, they still enter the organisation and they, there are plenty of people at SBS and ABS from culturally diverse backgrounds who do great stuff, but there's no um, system in place, you know what I mean? Those people have to work to their bone to be noticed and, you know, and to go further. Uh, in terms of uh, your question about education, that's actually that's a very good point. I think I'm not sure what universities are. I'm not sure what UTS and other universities have in terms of when they teach media. If they have a unit or on um, even actually even having a unit is like having you know SBS. It should I think it should filter through the entire course and it should be something that you're conscious of throughout your degree. And so it's part of you know subjects rather than just a unit that's allocated you know as a you know side thing. So. I'm afraid we're going to have to. No, I'm afraid we're just we've run out of time. I'm sorry, we're really tight on time today. So you'll get a chance next time round. Keep keep the question, change the topic. <laughs> <laughs>